let's get into the negatives. There's quite a few of them, unfortunately. Now let's call a spade a spade and say that this is not the same outfit. Hello, my beautiful life rights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 4, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. Today's runway theme is Night of a Thousand Shares where the queens must give us an interpretation of their best share looks. It's share, bitch! Oh my god, that was almost as bad as Maya Iman's share look. But I know you love that too. So, let's get into it. First up, it's Tsunami Muse. And Tsunami Muse is coming in as Cher from The Prisoner 1979. Uh, she's coming in in these sparkly outfit that's giving you very Bob Mackie with these big wings and she looks like gorgeous slick chocolate coming down the runway oh my god you know Tsunami Muse is one of those queens that someone she wasn't really doing it for me but she turned up she looks so exquisite this silver against her skin tone looks excellent it looks so expensive and put together it definitely gives you the reference of share and she's like you know what let me use this body i have a banging body and i'm gonna show every inch of it off on top of it she's got a lot of this like nude illusion mesh it matches her skin tone so nicely that it is a skin illusion, which sometimes people have been missing with those, you know what I mean? She's both giving you Bob Mackie share, but she's also giving you a little bit of that Victoria's Secret supermodel. She looks fantastic from head to toe, and she is definitely getting a fab from me. Next, we have Morphine Love Dion, and she's coming in as a 1988 Academy Awards share. She's coming in in this long, black beaded and sequence numbered paired with this big 70s or should i say 80s hair and she's definitely making it drag because she's making everything a little bit bigger now the part that i love is that she is showing skin as a drag queen we are definitely wearing padding we're definitely wearing hips we're wearing a lot of things you get the illusion of body without showing body but morphine was like no no i'm gonna do this the way Cher did it you could actually see Body and she looks exquisite. She said that she's not wearing any undergarments and that's how she's able to pull it off And I'm like girl work. I could never she looks excellent. This outfit does definitely look like a recreation uh, But making it more drag the only thing that she's missing is her golden Oscar statue I just wish she would have like pulled it out of somewhere. Oh my god imagine she opened the hair and she pulls out the statue that would be so brilliant in camp but morphine isn't very much a camp queen she is a sexy body queen and she is doing that on the runway and that is why for morphine love dion it is definitely gonna be a fab next up it's Maya Iman LePage, and Maya Iman LePage is giving us Cher promoting burlesque in 2009. Now, let's call a spade a spade and say that this is not the same outfit. Personally, what I think happened is she wanted to do Cher turn back time, but then walked into the workroom and saw that somebody else was doing Cher turn back time and was doing it better. So she switched up her reference to give another leather jacket moment. So she probably Googled leather jacket Cher and this came up and she was like, that'll do. Now I do think it was smart that she was avoiding the comparison because as you'll find out a little later in the episode, I do think that the other queen did it better. If you ignored the fact that this was supposed to be a burlesque look or you ignored the fact that it was probably supposed to be a turn back time look, then you would probably say it's actually pretty good. It's a sequence bodysuit with a leather jacket and some black hair. So it is quintessentially 
share. But once you start comparing the two looks and comparing this to it, it is not at the same level. Personally, I just think that Maya Mon was probably not that big of a share fan and probably wasn't really sort of inspired by this outfit. And that's why she kind of just took a bunch of pieces, put it together and did it a day. Cause it's just not like that perfection that it needs to be. That all being said, she looks good. I wish she would have done different hair with it, uh, maybe even bigger uh, to give you a little bit of a moment. But other than that, like I said, she does look good. And one of the things I always say is if you're not gonna follow a theme, you better look good doing it. And that's why I have to give her a soft fab. Next up, we have Geneva Carr giving us 1974 ringleader share. The ringleader from the Wrightley Brothers circus share that is. She's coming out in this head to toe red attire with a red top hat, red feathers, and lots of red blush. She is definitely giving her reference down to the makeup. So I love a girl who likes a little detail. On top of it, she said, you know what? This is drag, so I'm gonna put every stone in existence in this outfit. If you look at her hat, it's got all of these details. It's got all the details on her body and it is definitely sparkling on the stage. This is probably a very left field choice for Cher. This is not one that you would necessarily think of, but I like that she did something a little bit different and made it her own. So the one thing I will say is that Geneva Carr is not a tiny queen. So I think that she definitely needed to go with either a tighter corset or bigger boobs or a bigger ass just to give her that hourglass figure. Normally Geneva Carr never has this issue. So I do think it is the choice of garment because it does cut her up a little bit. And as it cuts her up, it does make her look a little bit like shorter and squatter. So she definitely needed to accentuate her shape a lot, lot more than she probably normally would have. But uh, other than that, I think all the other details are there. She definitely uh, gives you what she needs to give and she's definitely giving you that share moment. And that is why for Geneva Carr, I'm still gonna give her a five. Next, we have Mirage giving us 1979 share in concert. Uh, Mirage is coming out in this like lilac purple outfit with all of the little rhinestones, the big feathers, and the tall hair. It's definitely giving you Bob Mackie fantasy, uh, but it is also giving you Mirage. We already know that Mirage is a Vegas girl who likes to show a little bit skin here and there, and this suits her perfectly. It is definitely giving you that Vegas lifestyle while giving you uh, Bob Mackie and Cher all at once. You see it and you know immediately what it is. Now on the runway, she was critiqued for having a 60s style hair with a 70s slash 80s Cher um, and how they don't match because they're not from the same era. Well, personally, I don't care. I actually prefer this hair than the way Cher did it. I think that this was iconically Cher like when you see this hair, you already know it's iconically Cher. So pair it with one of Cher's outfits and it just makes it more Cher in my opinion. Maybe it's because I'm not as old as RuPaul, but uh, I don't care about the mix of eras as long as she looks good and damn, does she look good. This is what I've been waiting from Mirage. Uh, the first few episodes, they were some questionable outfits. I mean, I did give her some fabs, but they were never like really fab fab. And this one is fab fab. And that's why, if you didn't guess, she's getting a fab. Next up, it's Megami. And Megami is giving us Cher 2009 turn back time. She is wearing this sequence cat suit with this leather jacket. And she's both giving you sexy and punk. And she is looking so, so good. One thing that I love about Megami is that since she comes from the cosplay world, she's definitely looking at all of those like little details that makes it so iconically referential. So for example, the bodysuit, it's got the same sort of cutouts. She didn't decide to go in any sort of artistic interpretation. She decided I'm going to give you that same gown. It's perfectly made and perfectly stoned. On top of it, this is a different side from Megami. You know, Megami so far has been giving us a little bit more whimsy, a little bit more theater, a little bit more cosplay. And this time she said, you know what? I'm gonna do share, I'm gonna do share glam. 
It's still got that cosplay reference into it. But it's still a character, but it's a real person. It's Cher. So I love that Megami switching it up. I also love this outfit. If I was gonna do Cher, this is probably the Cher I would want to do. But if you're gonna do this iconic of a Cher, you gotta do it right. And Megami did. And that is why Megami is getting a fab from me. Next, we have Plain Jane giving us 1974 share at the Met Gala. She's coming in in this white feather and sequence gown with plain black straight hair. And she looks just like a Bob Mackie gal. She is definitely giving you the fantasy. You got the reference. She looks expensive and she is definitely giving it to ya. Honestly, I could just stare at this garment because it is just so gorgeous. Congratulations to the designer who put this together because brava, brava. That's all I have to say. It is perfection from head to toe and that is why she's getting a bop. Next up, it's a mandatory meeting. And a mandatory meeting is giving us 2001 Cher doll Cher. She's coming out in this lilac two-piece uh, top and skirt paired with this giant boa. She's wearing her simple black hair and giving it all on the runway. Now, I will say I am happy to see a mandatory meeting lift up her looks. Guys, you don't understand, I love a mandatory meeting. She is one of my favorite queens, but I always come on this show and I'm always so disappointed by her fashion, which kills me because I just love this queen. So I'm so happy to see that she is definitely bringing up her game week per week. That said, I still have quite a few problems with this outfit. So first, let's start with the positives. I love uh, this rendition of Cher. It's something a little bit different. It's a doll as opposed to a regular outfit. And because it's a doll, uh, I love that she took like those doll proportions in intact and gave the boa like made it so big, so camp, and so like disproportionate, which totally works. I also think that this color is really beautiful on her and I love that she decided to add more sequence fabric onto the garment to give it a little bit more of that drag look for the runway. Now let's get into the negatives. There's quite a few of them unfortunately. First up is her top. Uh, I think the top is, is well made but clearly she took um, some balls and put it inside and used them as boobs because you definitely see the space underneath. So I wish she had either done no boobs or she had done a breastplate. This little gap makes it feel like it is not fitting properly. Next, it is the boa. And the boa is, like I said, I love the size. I love the grandeur of it. But because she decided to make it out of tulle, it doesn't look that expensive. I guarantee if she did the exact same thing and made it out of feathers, even if it wasn't ostrich feathers, because we all know ostrich feathers are expensive, but just feathers in general, I think it would just would have elevated the look a little bit more and given you more of that like old school regal elegance. And lastly, let's talk about the hair. The hair is fine, but honestly, I think she's wearing the exact same wig I'm wearing right now. And this is a very cheap wig, I will let you know. I wish she would have done a little bit more with it and given us bigger, styled, human. I don't know, it just needed that extra oomph. I am going to assume that uh, a mandatory meeting was on a budget when creating her stuff for Drag Race and was being very thrifty on how she spent her money and she figured she didn't need an expensive wig. And honestly, on the grand scheme of things, I think the wig is the least important aspect and you do have to be crafty and Drag Race is freaking expensive. So I don't fault her at all for any of her choices. You gotta make the budget stretch. So I'm a little bit struggling because if this was any other queen, I would drab it, but I love Amanda and I think this is such an improvement for her and that is why I'm gonna give her a soft bag. Next up, it's Dawn and Dawn has given us 1966 mod share. Dawn says that the picture she had chosen was in black and white, so nobody knows what color it really is. So she decided to give you this orange and a blue fantasy, this giant coat with this white bell bottom attire. She's paired it with this brown hair and her traditional Dawn 
makeup. I liked on a lot, but I think this one was a little bit of a stretch. You could have sold me on the orange and blue color combination. I thought the story was quite cute, but honestly, it doesn't even look like the same look. If you're gonna go so crazy with the colors, then the jacket needs to be like almost like a perfect replica so that you can understand where she's going. I feel like it's not the same style of jacket and it's not the same colors you would expect it to be. So this felt a little bit off. On top of it, 1966 is the mod era. So if she did want to go color, I wish she would have done like more black and white. I think that could have been really cunt. Or if she did do with this orange and uh, blue, then I wish it would have been like more of a gradient sort of thing. The other thing is that Dawn decided to do this pulled back hair. And in the 60s, Cher wore flat hair with bangs. And I think that had she had the bangs, it would have helped uh, tell this story. And lastly, Dawn did her signature makeup, which doesn't really necessarily fit here. Now, I'm not saying that she needs to change her makeup or do something different. Um, it is her signature stamp, but I did wish that um, she had done it in more of a mod twist on it. Maybe some like black and white graphic eyeliner. I mean, Trixie Mattel just came out with a whole mod collection and if Trixie could do mod, Dawn could do mod as well. All in all, I feel like this was a little bit of a miss. If you didn't tell me this was Cher, there was a 0% chance I would understand it was Cher. On top of it, I don't really love the outfit and that is why for this week, Dawn is getting a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Q and Q is coming out as 1973 Sunny and Cher Comedy Hour Cher in this black and white garment and this big headpiece. Another homage to uh, Mr. Bob Mackie. I love that this dress is so quintessential. Cher, everybody knows it. We've even seen this referenced uh, on other seasons of Drag Race when it wasn't a Cher runway. What comes to mind is Cruella Deville from Crystal Versace. So if you are gonna do such an iconic look, you have to do it to the next level and better than everyone else. And honestly, she did. She did it so, so good. You can tell that Q is wants to be the fashion queen of the season. And honestly, I'm gonna give her that title. So far, every look she's pulled out, um, all four of these episodes have been nothing but impeccable. And this one is no different. I love the headpiece. I love the way that the cuts were made on the gown. I love the black and white. I love that she went iconic Cher and did it to Cher's level. And that says a lot. If you are able to do it to Cher's level, you're doing something right. And that is why for Miss Q, it is definitely gonna be a fab. Next up, it's Plasma, and Plasma is coming out as 1985 Met Gala Cher. She's coming out as another homage to Mr. Bob Mackie. She's wearing this long black skirt with this mesh sequence and rhinestone top. She's paired that with a crusted rhinestone earring and slick back hair. All in all, you can see that uh, Plasma is a fan of Cher because she took the reference photo and dissected it and did her best interpretation. Now, this is very much in Plasma's wheelhouse. Plasma likes to do these referential old school looks. But what I do like is that she didn't go camp with it. She didn't go comedy with it. She said, you know what? I'm gonna give you glamour share and I'm gonna give you a, another version of Plasma. And I love that because it is both in her character but also giving you the challenge. And I will say this is the best Plasma has looked on the runway so far. All in all, this was well done. It hits all of the little details and it definitely gives you share. And that is why for Plasma, it is gonna be a fab. Next, it's Nymphia Wind. And Nymphia Wind is coming out as 1979 Egyptian goddess Cher. Now, I was wondering if anyone was gonna go here. Cher has been known for some of her most at outlandish grand looks. Looking at them from a 2024 perspective, some people might say it's actually cultural appropriation. But back in the day, people weren't necessarily thinking like that and Cher was very much provoking and pushing the boundaries. I was wondering if any of the queens were gonna go into this route just because, you know, fans can be sometimes toxic and can be a little bit difficult, but 
Honestly, if you're gonna recreate a look, recreate a look. So I'm glad that somebody decided to give the same outfit. She's not culturally appropriating, maybe Cher was, but uh, Nymphia Wind is decided to recreate a Cher outfit. So I think it is perfectly fine in my opinion. But if you disagree, let me know in the comments because I love to be educated. All in all, let's get back to the outfit. I think this outfit is so smart. I love that it is almost a like for like. All of the details are there. Um, and you definitely need a skinny queen to pull this off because it is all body from head to toe. The other thing that I really enjoy is that she added these wings to the outfit because it gave you that more drama. She's not wearing that many clothes, so having those wings really added to the experience, added to the runway, added to the wow factor of it all. All in all, Nymphia Wind looked stunning, fantastic, and she looks like she owns that runway. And that is why for Miss Nymphia Wind, she is definitely gonna get a fab. Next up, we have Safira Cristal, and Safira Cristal is giving us 2017 Vegas residency share. She's coming out in this blue gown with this big feathered shoulder piece. On top of it, she's paired it with the biggest hair in the world. She said, share always gives you extra, and I am gonna give you extra on top of it. Now, the first thing I will say is that this queen's name is Safira, aka Sapphire, so I like that she went with a blue reference. She is making blue her color, but people might not necessarily have picked up on that because she is definitely giving you share. So she's both giving you share and her, and it definitely feels like her in comparison to all of her other outfits. If you do look at the outfit next to Cher's, Cher did not have this shoulder piece, but honestly, I love this shoulder piece. It's got a lot of width, it's got a lot of movement. She bought pheasant feathers. Now let me tell you, pheasant is even more expensive than ostrich. So this is expensive. But the other part that I love about it is she said, you know what, I'm gonna give you Cher and I'm gonna bring it up to a drag moment. I'm gonna add to it, I'm gonna make it bigger. But then she takes it off to reveal the normal Cher dress. So she's giving you drag Cher and regular Cher. What I love about Safira is she knows how to proportionize. She knows that she is not the tiniest woman and so she gave you this big hair and these big moments to kind of like make her feel so dainty and petite and I love that. That goes to show the talent of a queen when you can make yourself look teeny tiny even though you are a man in a dress. And may I say, a very elegant man. All in all, Safira looks freaking fantastic. This looks expensive, this looks neat, this looks shared, this looks Safira. It is on brand, it is amazing, and it is definitely a fab. Y'all, that is it for the runway. Now I will say I am not a queen who likes a gown. I'm not into the prettiness of drag. I like the performance and the drama of drag. Also, I am not a Cher fan personally, so I was very skeptical going into this runway theme. And I must say that all the queens turned it out. I think this is the episode that I've given the most fabs in my entire fab or drab history, um, so it was really hard to pick my tops and bottoms of the week. But speaking of tops and bottoms, let's get into why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my drab of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to Dawn. Dawn is actually the only queen this week that I gave a drab to. I just felt like this wasn't a uh, share and it wasn't as amazing as everybody else. And that is why she got my drab of the week. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab this week had to go to Plain Jane. I loved this look. It was amazing from the head to toe. It was literal perfection. But honestly, this week was so hard to choose a fab of the week. There were so many queens that I loved so much, including Tsunami Muse, Megami, Q, and of course, Plain Jane. They all turned it up for me and I could have went any way. I think this is this, the episode I gave the most five stars to, the most four stars to. I decided to go with Plain Jane because ultimately she looked the most expensive and put together and that is a lot to be said on this runway. Y'all, do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Uh, well, let me know in the comments below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to hit a thousand subscribers and guys, I finally hit 800. 
So we are getting closer. Hopefully I can get to that thousand by the end of this series. So click that subscribe button. Uh, once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you next week for my next episode. Goodbye.